This is the biggest monitor I have ever owned. It's Aorus's brand new CO49 DQ 49 inch OLED ultra wide monitor and it's going to be going in my racing sim setup. But before that, I'm going to be doing a full review on it. So before I have to pick it up and move it again, let's dive in. Let's check out the monitor in full, starting by getting it unboxed and take a look at what we get. In the box, we have the plastic covered metal base, the stand itself, which is also plastic, the instruction manual, and a bunch of cables, including DisplayPort, high-speed HDMI, USB upstream, and two power cables, depending on your region. The stand is made up of two parts, the base and the stand itself, which is secured by a single screw in the bottom. Then the monitor simply clicks into the top of the stand and you can assemble the whole thing without the need for tools. The base of the stand is pretty sizable and does take up a fair amount of space on the desk. However, you would expect this for a monitor of this size as you don't want it to topple over. The design gives off a real gamer vibe with the angular feet and shape of the base, which contrasts with a more sleek and simple stand with a hole in the middle for cables to be channeled. In terms of adjustability, the stand allows you to raise and lower the height of the monitor, tilt it forwards and backwards, and you can also pivot from side to side a good amount as well. Of course, if you're wanting to mount the monitor to an arm or the wall, it has a 100 by 100 mil VESA mount compatibility on the back as well. Just make sure that you've got a pretty sturdy mount that can take the weight of this chunky thing. Now taking a look at the monitor itself, the design is pretty simple. You have the 49 inch panel with nice thin bezels around the edges and the thicker bezel on the bottom. The panel itself has a glossy finish which I personally prefer in an OLED over a matte coating and we'll talk about how that affects things like reflections a bit later on. The edges of the screen are nice and thin and then we have this bulkier section on the back which is where the components and ports are housed. Speaking of the ports, we have two HDMI 2.1 ports, DisplayPort 1.4, USB-C with 18 watt power delivery and can be used as a DisplayPort alternative, two USB 3.2 ports, USB upstream and a 3.5mm audio jack. One downside to the position of the ports on this monitor is the fact it makes it extremely difficult to hide the cables as they feed out and as someone who values cable management a lot, this, together with the placement of the channel in the stand, is not something I'm a huge fan of. Then finally, you also have the control joystick located on the bottom of the monitor for turning it off and on and navigating the menu. So let's get on to the specs of the monitor. This is a 49-inch QD OLED monitor with a 5120 by 1440 resolution, 144Hz refresh rate, and 0.03 millisecond gray to gray response time. It also has a 1.5 million to 1 contrast ratio, 10-bit color, 99% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage, and is VESA Display HDR True Black 400 certified. So you get stunningly vibrant colors throughout, paired with dark blacks to help them stand out even more. In terms of brightness, there isn't actually a figure given in the specs for peak HDR brightness, but in similar monitors, you'd expect this to be a thousand nits. And from using it, while it's not the brightest I've ever used, it is more than enough for gaming and general use. The monitor also supports variable refresh rate, AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, and VESA Clear MR. The 32 by 9 aspect ratio with an 1800R curve is equivalent to having two 27 inch 16 by 9 monitors side by side to give a nice immersive experience when gaming on this monitor. You also get 178 degree viewing angles, meaning you can clearly see everything on the screen from pretty much any angle that you'd like. There's also a built-in KVM which allows you to plug in your mouse and keyboard into the Type-A ports and control your PC from the display. And thanks to the USB Type-B and Type-C upstream capabilities, with the latter able to be used as a DisplayPort alternative, you can also plug in something like a laptop and utilize the picture-in-picture -picture features to have a side-by-side -side or overlay of both at the same time. And of course, on a monitor of this size, you can display them next to each other very nicely. But that's enough of the specs, how does the monitor actually perform? Well, I tested a bunch of games on here, and of course, the first issue you run into with any monitor of this size is finding games that are actually compatible with a super ultra-wide resolution. But for the games I was able to play on here, I was definitely very impressed. The 5120x1440p resolution in a monitor of this size is obviously not as sharp as gaming on a smaller 4K monitor, but the image quality is very nice across a variety of games. You're really able to sit back and take in the beautiful immersive experience of gaming on this type of monitor. I played a variety of different titles on here, ranging from games like Minecraft and Forza Horizon 5 to Starfield and Cyberpunk 2077. 
and I really felt like I was right there in game. The screen basically fills your peripheral vision with the vast surroundings giving you an impression of scale and immersion. You get the beautifully vibrant colours and contrast that you come to expect from QD OLED monitors like this one and they help transport you into a world of incredible beauty especially in games with excellent scenery and graphics. The 144Hz refresh rate is certainly lower than some of the other 240Hz 49 inch OLED monitors on the market and if you have a PC capable of running games at a high FPS you may notice this in certain titles but for the most part it's easily enough to give a nice fluid experience across a variety of games. As I'm personally planning on using this in my racing sim to play racing games, I don't require that higher refresh rate that someone playing competitive FPS games might, so it's definitely worth noting that depending on what you're planning on using the monitor for. Overall though, as my first experience of playing games on a monitor of this size, I'm very happy with the performance in terms of running the games and the visuals that you get from the CO49DQ. A lot of people using monitors of this size will also be using them for work and productivity rather than gaming, so how does it stack up in that sense? Well, you can certainly fit a lot of stuff on this screen, so it's perfect for multitasking and having everything you need there in front of you. I mentioned the KVM and side-by-side -side capabilities before, and with the 32 by 9 aspect ratio, you can basically fit two full apps side-by-side. -side. With it being a 1440p resolution, the text clarity certainly does take a hit compared to higher resolution screens, and where I've been using a 4K monitor recently, you can notice the difference. But actually, I have to say the text clarity on this monitor is actually pretty good. I would gladly sit and use this monitor for scrolling through news articles or replying to emails without putting too much strain on my eyes trying to read the text. This would also be a good monitor for editing videos in terms of being able to fit an entire timeline on the screen and have that whole project laid out in front of you. You can of course also use this monitor for watching media as long as you don't mind the black bars down either side. And while this wouldn't be my personal choice for watching movies or TV, if you did choose to, they still come out looking very nice thanks to those colour and contrast levels mentioned before. The CO49DQ does also come with built-in speakers as well, so you can play games and watch movies and TV without the need to connect it to external speakers or headphones. That being said though, as is the case with most monitor speakers, they're not the best quality and have a much more tinny and empty sound than external speakers would. So if you did want to get the best audio experience, then I would recommend using other speakers. You can control all of the settings on this monitor through the built-in menu system. By clicking in the joystick on the bottom of the monitor, you can bring up options to power off the monitor, customize the settings, game assist options, and also OLED care. Within here, you can customize all sorts from picture settings, display mode, changing the input, KVM, picture in picture, and even change the resolution displayed on the monitor. Now I briefly touched on Game Assist and this is basically a load of included features to improve your gaming experience. This includes the ability to display information such as a timer, counter and also your refresh rate info. You can also set up a crosshair in a bunch of different styles which is giving me Call of Duty Red Dot Sight vibes as well as displaying a dashboard with a load of PC hardware info like frame rate, temperatures and fan speeds. And finally if you want you can also play around with the display alignment as well. The monitor also comes with a few OLED care features too. With OLED monitors like this, we always talk about the risk of burn-in, which is where static pixels being displayed on screen for long periods of time causes them to permanently burn into the screen. This was a big issue with older OLED monitors, but these newer gen models have done a great job to reduce that risk. In the OLED care settings, you can choose the usage time, play around with settings for pixel clean and shift, which basically moves the pixels around slightly so that they're no longer static, as well as things like static logo dimming, where the monitor detects any static images from say your game's HUD and dims them to prevent that burn-in risk. Now finally we can talk about the way this monitor handles lighting and reflections. It has a glossy panel which if you've seen any of my other OLED reviews is my preferred panel type over the anti-glare matte coating. With a matte finish, you tend to get truer blacks and better contrast, but with the glossy finish, you get more vibrant and bright colours, and as the contrast is already very good, I tend to prefer that option. But of course, the other thing with these glossy panels is the way they handle reflections. And as you can see, direct light sources on this monitor do tend to pose a bit of a problem. If you're using this monitor opposite, say, a window, or in this case, I'm using a big studio light, as you can see, even with the anti-reflective treatment this panel has had, you do still get quite a bit of reflection, so it's important to note this when thinking about where you're going to be using it. 
In lower ambient light situations though, the monitor looks great and this is less of a problem. So overall then, this monitor certainly has some great features that would make it a good option to pick up. You get those stunning vibrant colours and contrast that you would come to expect from a QD OLED monitor which make gaming on here a beautiful experience. This monitor certainly does not let you down when it comes to picture quality. The giant 32 by 9 aspect ratio paired with the 1800R curve is enough to immerse you fully in game without the monitor sticking out too far over your desk. And being equivalent to two 27 inch monitors side by side, it's also perfect for productivity. That together with the built-in KVM will certainly make this an attractive option for many people. The 1440p resolution isn't as clear as 4K, but until we get 4K ultrawise, this really isn't overly an issue as games will still look absolutely fantastic and the text clarity on here is actually very good. The 144Hz refresh rate is certainly a bit of a drawback as there are other 240Hz OLED ultrawides out there that do come in at around the same price, so it depends on whether your PC is capable of running higher or if that's a big factor for you. And speaking of price, this monitor can currently be picked up around £1,200 from most retailers. Either way, I'm definitely enjoying the quality of this monitor and I'm looking forward to getting it into my racing sim soon.